Welcome back to the Crypto Ski Conversation. And boy, oh boy, is there some stuff going on in the community. This whole uh, Judge Torres uh, SC versus Ripple summary judgment has, has caused a lot of people to spread a lot of FUD and misinformation. So I'm going to let the expert here, uh, JD, kind of break things down a little bit before we get going in this video. So let's start with this right here. This is, I wanted to just kill all the nonsense out there where everybody is acting like the Torres decision uh, somehow has been minimized, okay, or trivialized because of the Rakoff decision. And, and the, the, the great thing to me, the great irony is that some of these people, right, we know people like Joe Lubin and others, they supported this case against Ripple and they supported the case against XRP. Those people called XRP a security. They tweeted it out. They celebrated it. They were like XRP holders. They laughed at us. They said, we're going to lose and be careful what you celebrate, support, and ask for. Because according to her decision, all those people that bought ETH or bought other tokens who are venture capitalists who are purchasing those tokens at that token factory, for example, all of those under the law constitute illegal securities according to the Torres ruling. So be careful what you ask for. And what ended up happening is good guys won, bad guys zero. Next the re I mean, str straight up and down, and we're going to touch a little bit more on the whole, you know, uh, we'll just say hashtag ETH because it encompasses a lot of stuff, but obviously we've showed the video footage and the audio clips of Joe, Joe Lubin and all of his gloating and bragging about this, you know, free pass that they got and how they have, you know, unlimited token, token issuances and how they've made all this money, right? But we know... We know, we have the timeline and we know how they were doing things. We don't know everything, but we know enough to, to for there to be some sort of investigation or something to happen, right? And obviously what JD's saying right here is like, no, those are under litigation. That is classified as security, right? So we're going to touch on that, but we're going to come over here. Uh, James K. Filing here. Oh, uh, excuse me. Shout out Riz XRP, man. Shout out. Um, James K. Filing says, uh, breaking SC files letter outlining its basis for filing a motion for leave to file an interlocutory appeal regarding pragmatic um, offers and sales to XRP buyers over trading platforms and Ripple's other distri uh, distributions. So there's people out there that's been speculating and spreading this false information. I even saw, saw Watcher Guru do it, uh, saying that, oh, you know, there's uh, the SEC is going to uh, appeal um uh, XRP security status, and that's not what it is. Coming over here, Stuart Autorati says, the SEC does not have the right to appeal just yet, which is why they are asking permission to file an interlocutory appeal. Ripple will file its response with the court next week. Stay tuned. So, I mean, Stuart Autorati is uh, Ripple general counsel, and obviously, man, they, they just know they're on the right side of the law and the right side of history. So there's a lot of confidence. There's a lot of professionalism. And they're just going to continue to stand their ground and fight the good fight. And that's what we need in this community. So shout out Stu and um, uh, the whole Ripple team. Jeremy Hogan even says, and that C continues making questionable decisions requesting an interlocutory appeal. Note that it is not appealing whether XRP itself is a security, just it uh, just its losses on the pragmatic and individual cell issues. <laughs> Oh, what Sherry said? I didn't even read this one. So the biggest takeaway for me is now I have two cases to refer to in regards to interlocutory repeal. Rio Tinto took 26 days and now Ripple at 28 days. I swear it seems like SC aims to be dramatic while these last minute uh, with these last minute filings. So keep that in mind. Remember, we talked about on this channel how Chairman Gensler and the SEC tactics have been delay, 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 right? This is going to come into context here when I get ready to talk about it in, in a few here. Uh, BC Baggers responding to Jeremy Hogan saying, quote, not appealing whether XRP itself is a security market will soon realize the narrative is dead that the SEC can appeal XRP status. Bitcoiners hung their hat on this storytelling for three weeks. Reality about to set in. XRP is not security and that cannot be appealed. So that's Jeremy Hogan's even been talking about that. He was saying, you know, I don't I think this is appeal proof. You know, uh, Judge Torres's uh, summary judgment and even J.D. He had a live stream today where he was talking about how our Judge Torres is. Um, uh, I, I don't even know what you say, but it's like her document and the way it's written out, this summary judgment is in this ruling is written out. It is literally like seal proof and, and locked down tight. 
amazing. So like when he was saying that, I was like, oh man. And then I came in here to start gathering some stuff that I wanted to talk about. And I saw, you know, um, what the people in our community were talking about, you know, that it, it can't be a pill. It's not, it's not even up for discussion in the sense, you know, people are just speculating, trying to spread FUD. And just like we talk about in this channel in previous videos, it's, it's the narrative that they're trying to spin. It's, it's crazy. The monumentous victory from, uh, in, in ripple in the SEC versus ripple case, it's, it's truly precedent setting for the entire industry. And we've seen it. And now even big players that were against Ripple and XRP community, they're starting to see it. You know, you have the likes of Mr. Dimes to Donuts, um, you know, Mike Novogratz talking about how huge and how uh, Ripple, the Ripple victory and the XRP victory has set uh, shockwaves uh, in, at the SEC. Come on now. It, it's showtime, baby. Uh, Watcher Guru says right here, breaking SEC to appeal judge ruling uh, that Ripple XRP is not security. So that that's uh, false. Um, and I'm wondering if they're going to correct that. But yeah, that's not what it is. It's about the pragmatic sales. And uh, BC backers pretty much calling them out saying, hey, uh, just in SEC does not appeal security status of digital assets XRP. XRP non-security status ruling at serving judgment remains unchallenged. Ripple, the company, has its pragmatic sales challenged. And then he has another one here. We say no, they're not. Uh, XRP's non uh, non security status can't be appealed. So if BC Backer had put out a, um, let me come over here really quick. Let me see if he has it here. Let me zoom out. He had put out a video today. Ooh, let me see. I'm just gonna put this up here, but this was on the. But he was pretty much covering. Um, all these technical terms, man. I forgot what the term was, but uh, just reiterating kind of what he was showing in this. You know, we're getting close to that 200 MA. Uh, it's almost in a sense we're like two or three percent away from seeing if we're gonna, you know, bounce off this this 200 and, and make you know utilize it as support, or are we gonna break through it? And it become resistance. So it's just kind of a waiting game to kind of see what happens. But the reason why I'm saying that is BC Backer had touched on, uh, you know, XRP charts and stuff. Looking at um, the Elliott Wave theory stuff, which is way over my head. But he makes he breaks it down to where it makes sense. And there's just a lot of excitement that we're building towards. And that's why I wanted to touch on that really quick. But coming over here, Crypto Law USS fact check on pre-trial schedule issued today by Judge Torres, Ripple is not going on trial. Judge Torres ruling that the XRP token is not a security is not going to trial. The trial will not decide matters of law, only one narrow set of facts in dispute. Uh, the remaining dispute over the facts relating only to Chris Larson and Brad Gallenhouse were explained on pages 30 to 34 of Torres' decision. And he's talking about here is a link. So uh, just kind of, yeah, put, put more facts out there. And if you haven't seen uh, Crypto Law US and JD's uh, current live stream that they had, I think it was like four hours ago or something like that, I highly recommend you go in and, and, and uh, listen to it. Ashley Prosper put this up, and I thought this was interesting. So remember I talked about Chairman Gensler and the SEC's tactic of delay, 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 right? They pushed on this whole uh, narrative in the, in the SEC versus Ribble case. They drug it out, right? Check this out. Ashley goes, the biggest joke from the SEC letter of intent to file an interlocutory appeal is the is right here. I laughed out loud when I read it. So right here, uh-oh, it says, SEC seeks the, uh, the expedient or to expedite an efficient uh, ultimate resolution of this litigation and has thus proposed a briefing schedule that will permit the court to swiftly rule on its proposed motion. Come on, man. And I said, I said the delayers asking and de no, no, excuse me. The delayer is demanding uh, things get get handled swiftly. Like, come on, man, who are you kidding? It, it's crazy. These are th this is a perfect example of when it's convenient for them. And we've talked about it on this channel. That's what Chairman gets from the SEC and all these corrupt and uh, just bad actors. You know, un unjust and unlawful people. That's how they are. When it benefits them, they want things to be a certain way, right? But when it doesn't. Oh, no, no. This is how it has to be. Nah, man. Oh, man. I I, ho I really hope he gets what he got coming to him, and, um, uh, legally speaking, uh, if something comes. We'll see. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Huber here. It says, the SC is fighting Ripple to its own death, only to protect the biggest fraud in history. So I'm not going to play this video, but mem remember, we showed it in the community. We showed it on this channel a lot. This is Joe Lubin on the audio clip talking about you can disguise, uh, you can use multiple identities and disguise your purchases. So these are the old early wells of the Ethereum ICO, you know, um, so they didn't, you know, weren't red flags in the system. 
So this is tying into the whole hashtag ETH gate and uh, what JD said in the beginning of this video talking about, you know, those VCs that have purchased all these at discounts, you know, in a sense promising, you know, to, uh, you know, profit from their purchase, their early purchases. That's all security status. Those are all violations. And this is not even getting into whole William, uh, Bill Hinman and Jay Clayton and all that shit. So this is just like one component here. Uh, DAI hits it on the head here. He goes, don't forget the Ripple decision has created a situation where ETHgate and all involved are completely exposed. This is more over the target than you know. I mean, and he's talking about Mr. Huber's uh, post of this audio clip that, you know, DAI plays all the time as well. Man, things are going to be quite interesting. And, okay, so this is where I was going to take this. So with that, right, the whole hashtag ETHgate from our speculation and from the timeline that we have and all the names that we have, um, there's powerful people that we pro we don't have on that list or on that timeline that definitely don't want their names or their uh, involvement in hashtag Ethgate to be exposed, right? So there's the whole narrative of like how things are lining up when it comes to you know, regulation, Congress, bills that are being presented when it comes to crypto, right? So I'm going to touch on that at the end, but just just put that in your mind for a second. All this stuff is all being formulated and molded to fit a certain narrative, and we're going to touch on that. All right, continuing on here, uh, DAI had put this up. It says, convince me that Homeland Security did not meet with the four Satoshis, and explain to me why this isn't the number one topic and issue for any proponent of Bitcoin, Mark Yusko. We have the video if you need it. <laughs> so he's talking about the video of that Homeland Security agent sending the agent uh, to go meet with the four Satoshis, right? So we know that it's already out there. Why are they constantly ignoring this? Why are they um, acting as if it's not real? Even the likes of uh, Michael Saylor. Like, how, how come no one's addressing this? And they even talk about the fact that Satoshi Nakamoto is this unforeseen unknown figure which gives bitcoin its sanctity and its position and it's if they as they say they're right it's rightful position as number one in the market right why aren't they addressing what's happening like even if it was like something false right we'll just speculate or, or throw out uh, um what do you call that a hypothetical what if that's false right why wouldn't they want to debunk that is it because they know it's real it because they know who the satoshis are remember they're just trying to herd the sheep man they're not they're not idiots they're putting billions of dollars into this hundreds of millions and billions of dollars they're not idiots it's it's silly but check this out man this cat's funny right here listen to this this is mark gusko right here Pivoting from topics i know i'm gonna get a lot of grief i should have pushed you more on xrp but i just want to know your opinion i still don't own it and and just 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 to be real, i still don't own it and i would love anyone in the army to to you know convince me that i should own it so i'm open to that conversation from top. Well, <laughs> quite honestly, I don't think anyone cares to convince you, to be honest. Um, personally, I, I mean, I can care less. I don't know Mark Yusko's tr like influence to like the, to, to the degree of influence he has, but quite honestly, it is what it is. Um, you you want to miss out on it? That's that's on you. All the stuff's out there. I mean, we can send you all the, you know, the timeline. We can send you uh, all the utility and use case and, and, and partnerships and growth of, of uh, you know, the digital asset XRP and the company Ripple. We can send you all that stuff, but it's like, it seems like they don't want, just like the, you know, I'm just saying the maxis out there. Like, it's just like they don't want to, they don't want to face the truth. They want to continue that lie or that narrative until they get what they want or until the flipping happens. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, I'm just saying, hey, hypothetically speaking, what if, you know, XRP or, or even Ethereum flipped Bitcoin one day? You know what I'm saying? I doubt they'll let that happen, but we'll, we will see, man. It's just quite interesting how people are still, still act and behave that way. XRP is the only digital asset in the United States that has... Uh, regulatory clarity with a non-security status. Ethereum has a fake one and Bitcoin has, uh, well, not, it's a free pass, excuse me, and Bitcoin the same way. Ugh, I don't know, man. And on top of all the utility and use case, right? It's crazy. Fast transactions, growth of, you know, uh, the ripple of the company, even with the drop of the lawsuit, they were talking about growing exponentially. It was like over eight times. Come on now. And XRP staying in the, the top eight. Um, 
uh, in, uh, in in regards of market cap when it comes to the, the, the crypto projects. I mean, it's it's crazy. Or the digital assets, excuse me. Uh, a crypto bull hits it right here. says, the Bitcoin maxes will try to spread fear and lies about XRP until it overtakes Bitcoin. Remember that XRP is the only regulated digital asset in the U.S. ruled not to be a security. And we talk about the U.S. on this channel because obviously we've just undergone almost a three-year, and it's still ongoing, but an ongoing three-year litigation uh, and lawsuit from the SEC. So it's a big deal, right? And obviously, the, the U.S. is a big deal when it comes to the global economy. But obviously, we've had a lot of success and, and clarity, if you will, in other parts of the world. But, man, it's it's crazy how people are still just in denial. And I'm not going to play this video, but it says, uh, Bitcoin Magazine says, new $385 billion investment firm, uh, Carlisle Group co-founder, quote, the mighty BlackRock is willing to have an ETF in Bitcoin Maybe Bitcoin is going to be around for a while. So stuff that we've been talking about on this channel, in this community, especially with BlackRock coming out, obviously they got their uh, spot Bitcoin ETF uh, application pushed back to them. They put uh, Coinbase as their or surveillance partner and custody partner uh, and the rest of the app, uh, you know, like the Kathy Woods and ARK Invest and all the other spot Bitcoin ETF applications follow suit. So it's just a matter of when they start approving these things. And there's been speculation that, from Mike Novogratz, the inside man, quote unquote, uh, is talking about four to six months. Uh, and if they're going to approve one of them, they're going to have to approve the rest of them because it's all the same. It's just a different name on, on the on the top of the application, if you will. So, man, there are going to be a lot of sparks flying this uh, this bull cycle. It's going to be crazy. And I, I mean, just my opinion, XRP is probably going to be the top, 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 top one. It, it's going to be nuts. And I'm excited about it. Uh, Crypto Law US says, then what the F is she doing trying to delay and stop the enactment of, the, of that framework? So this is Coindesk saying, Congresswoman Maxine Waters says she's deeply concerned that PayPal has decided to launch its new stablecoin, PYUSD, when there's still no federal framework for overseeing these assets. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just crazy because like if you look at any of like the uh, Maxine Waters clips that we put out in the community and that the community has, you know, broken down and beat up and, and put it into a nice package for us. Uh, yeah, it's like crypto bad, you know, Bitcoin bad and trying to do everything in their power to, you know, uh, uh, shape this uh, industry and this market and, and fit it and mold it into what works for them. Right. And then you're like, oh, this is deep. We're deeply concerned. Really? You ain't deeply concerned then why like JD says, like what are you doing then? Why what's the suppression? What's the delay? What's the hate? What's the negativity? You know what I'm saying? Why not be more friendly and open and, and, and come together? It's crazy. Now, remember what I said when I talked about how I want you to think about like how uh the whole hashtag Ethgate and, and the all the all the unknown people that we don't have on the timeline, right? These powerful people don't want their identities their names their involvement in hashtag ethgate and e even all the other shady stuff they won't they won't want that stuff to surface right so when it comes to all these bills getting worked on and uh it seems like i'm gonna just make it short it seems like in my opinion uh and in the opinion of other community members that they're like trying to rush and scramble to try to get something passed jd saying he don't think anything's going to be passed right uh this year and he's saying maybe not till 2025 but it seems like people are trying to scramble and when i'm saying people i'm talking about whoever they put hey they're like hey you need to go ahead and handle this so we get some sort of clarity and regulations and some sort of framework in my opinion so they can you know protect their butts right so i'm just saying that i'm wondering if things will get you know, just like the spot Bitcoin ETF stuff. What if that gets rolled out in, in perfect time again? What if they do, you know, have some sort of agreement or some sort of framework or some sort of bill that provides, you know, clarity within uh, the crypto space? I mean, what if it all just rolls out and then that protects these people that don't want to be surfaced and that don't, um, you know, want that exposed, that exposure, if you will? Just kind of me speculating. And it just, that's just what it seems like, man, because it's crazy how like all this time, and then now, like, things are starting to move. After all this time, all the stuff that's been put out there, all the fight and all the con connect to Congress, all that stuff, right? And I understand things take time, but it just seems a little rushed, in my opinion. And I could be I could be speaking out of turn. I'm just speaking from an everyday dude on the Internet, really. I mean, I don't know. That's just kind of how I see things. But I, I'm, I'm an advocate of there are no coincidences, relatively speaking, and things just don't happen in this space for no reason. 
know what I'm saying? They've There's already been a plan. There's already been something, a coordinated effort, and that's just kind of the reality. So I'm trying to formulate, based on the evidence that I have, what it means to you know our industry, but obviously what I see and how it influences my investment portfolio and my involvement in this space. Anyways, yeah. Coming over here, we're currently sitting at a neutral. Bitcoin sitting, uh, Bitcoin Fair Green Index sitting at a 50, and I'm just going to hit the market cap right here. We're currently sitting at a $1.2 trillion market cap. <sighs> That's all I have for you. Make sure you come to the Crypto's Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Crypto's Key One. Really appreciate your support out there, you guys. With all that being said, stay strong out there and be safe.